Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, taking a look at one of the rifles that is going to be in their upcoming April of 2020 premiere auction. This is a Remington Keen rifle, but it's a factory experimental Remington Keen. Now, the Remington Keen in general uh, was Remington's attempt to get a military government contract by combining, well, for a magazine-fed rifle in 1878 trials, they combined a bolt-action system with an underbarrel tubular magazine. They gave it sort of a fake hammer, which is kind of interesting. The exposed hammer was typical on rifles of the time, and it made people more comfortable uh, with the handling and the safety characteristics of the gun. However, it's not actually a hammer, it's just a hammer-like spur on a striker. Anyway, if you're interested in the basic Remington Keen, the production version, I have a video on that. There'll link at the end of this that you should take a look at. Because what we have here is a factory experiment using the Remington Keen to try and handle the potential issue of tube magazine detonation. So this concept is maybe a little debated in some circles as to whether it actually happens. The fact of the matter is, it does actually happen, just very, very infrequently. But enough that there were some official attempts, like this one, to prevent it. So the issue is, if you have a tubular magazine, it means you've got uh, the nose of one bullet resting directly on the primer of the cartridge uh, in front of it. And in theory, if there's enough of a shock, this can cause one cartridge to set off another. And because they're not contained, the brass will explode and it'll be bad. Um, this does absolutely happen, just like I said, not very frequently. And Remington came up with this really kind of wacky experimental thing to prevent it. So let me show you what it's actually doing here. When tube magazines first came into use, they were used with rimfire cartridges. And so this detonation problem wasn't an issue at all. It was only with the advent of centerfire cartridges that it would become a concern. And it was relatively quickly uh, rendered uh, a non-issue by the adoption of box magazines in most uh, firearms. Anyway, uh, what Remington did here is they added this assembly to the bottom of the action. And this is a little, basically, an, its own independent magazine of spacer discs. The idea would be you'd have sort of a little donut-shaped spacer in between cartridges that would prevent them from actually contacting each other and prevent any detonation. So to use this, you would rotate this down, and you then have a manually operated little plunger here. You'd have a stack of these spacers in this tube. Unfortunately, this is uh, broken at the moment, and so I can't perfectly demonstrate it for you. But what you would do is typical uh, unloading or reloading process for the Remington Keen. You open the bolt, and then flip the rifle over, and depress this, which is your loading gate. And you can actually see one of those spacers right there in the magazine tube, but it doesn't want to come out of there. Uh, you would load a cartridge, and then you would use this plunger to push a spacer into place, and then you'd load another cartridge, and you'd do this manually, one round at a time, just like normal, until the gun was fully loaded. Then you can close the bolt, lock it down. That drops the loading lever all the way down. Now the really unique part about this is that every time you fire, uh, when you go to load the next round, our loading gate has dropped here to cycle the next round. And the first thing that's going to come out is one of those spacers. And there's a little spring that's been added that pushes the spacer straight down back into its tube storage. So it, the spacers never actually come out of the gun. They cycle between the tube magazine and the little spacer magazine. So the spacer goes back into its little house. The cartridge drops out onto the loading lever here. When you pull the bolt all the way back, that pops up, allowing you to then feed it into the cartridge, into the chamber, to fire a second round. So when you're not actually loading, uh, this tube gets rotated off to the right, like this, where it doesn't move. When you are loading, you rotate it up. You'll notice it depresses that little spring button. Uh, to allow the spacers to come out. And that is how the whole system was supposed to work. Just a couple other quick elements to point out on this particular rifle here. Uh, it does not have a rear sight added, and frankly looks like it never did. Uh, but for the purposes of, of being a trials gun for this new mechanism, it doesn't need a front sight, or it doesn't need a rear sight. It also doesn't need a front sight, uh, and no front sight was ever installed on that front band. 
And then perhaps most interestingly, uh, it has been given an automatic cocking mechanism. So on the standard Remington Keen, you would open the bolt, and then you'd close the bolt, and then you'd have to manually cock the hammer before you could fire, replicating the, the handling of most of the other, well, the single shot rifles that were out there at the time. With this prototype, you can see when I push the bolt forward, it automatically cocks the striker back here. So uh, clearly Remington recognized that this manual cocking thing was Kind of, well, frankly, a dumb idea that was instituted only because the military insisted on it. So their experimental version here does more than just improve safety. It also uh, improves efficiency and handling right there. And lastly, it's worth pointing out that the magazine cutoff was also never installed, uh, probably because it would interfere with this new uh, magazine system. Well, the good news for folks is that the tube magazine detonation issue really wasn't that big of a problem. It did happen, but so infrequently that it just, a system like this to avoid it just wasn't feasible, wasn't practical, and really wasn't necessary. Uh, so this was obviously abandoned by Remington. Uh, they may have built one or two other prototypes of the system, but it never went into mass production. Uh, it is very cool to get a chance to look at to basically to get a view into what the factory was concerned about and what they were considering uh, to avoid potential problems. So uh, if you're interested in this sort of thing, of course it is coming up for sale at Rock Island in April. If you're not interested in this, well, they have a lot of other interesting stuff in that catalog as well. You can check out on their website. Thanks for watching.